Last class, we talked about um, uniform distributed loads and calculating internal loads when you have a uniform distributed load. And what's the uniform distributed load that's going to come up over and over in this class? Wait, yep. And so now uh, I'm going to talk about non-uniform distributed loads. Um, okay, so let's say that you have a beam uh, pin joint there, roller there, and some arbitrary distributed load um, where uh, this end we're calling x equals 0, this end say the length is L, so this is x equals L, and the distributed load is described by the function f of x. Um, in order to do calculations, once we choose a body to isolate, we're always going to represent the distributed load as a point force, so we need to know the magnitude of the force and we need to know the location. Um, how do you calculate the how do you calculate the magnitude of the force? Just okay. So so yeah, the the magnitude of the force is the area, right? And so the magnitude of this force is just going to be the integral of f with respect to x. And then what about the location? What's the, how do you describe, like where is that location going to be? What's that point called? Centroid. Centroid, yep. And uh, anyone remember the formula for a centroid, the integral formula? It has a dx. <laughs> yeah, that is. So we got the beginning and the end. Um, so it's 1 over the area. Uh, and then uh, multiplied by the integral over the entire area where you have the centroid of each increment of area times the little increment of area. So um, let's do one example. Um, I'd like you to work through this, actually. Um, let's say that you have a simply supported beam with a distributed load that's a triangular shape. The length is L, and the height is H. Um, in other words, this point is H in um, units of force per meter. Um, so what you have to do is find the area of that shape. That I think you can do. And then you have to find the centroid of that shape. It's over here somewhere. Uh, when we did this in statics, uh, we pretty much for triangular shapes, we always used a formula. What you're going to do right now is come up with an expression for this formula. Um, so what you're going to have to do is uh, 
when you integrate with respect to area, so this is kind of always the key to um, finding the centroid through integration. It's all about how you define your increment of area. So I'm going to tell you a way to do that that works well in this case. So if you have this triangle, your increment dA is going to be this thing. Um, if this distance is x, what's the height of this increment of area? So this thing overall is dA. What? Yep, f of x is the height. Um, and what's the location of the centroid of that dA? Because you need that for, yep, that's right. So for this thing, uh, the centroid of the increment is so f of x over 2 gives you the y centroid. What's going to be the x centroid? x because this thing is infinitesimal. OK, so you have, um, oh, and what's going to be the thickness of this? Yep, exactly. OK. So the area of this thing is going to be fx dx. Uh, the centroid is this. Um, take a minute, work together, and work through that integral problem. So what does anyone re remember what you should get here for this formula? We did a lot of triangular stuff last semester. So it should be 1 third of the height. Um, and I guess since we're since we have the triangle facing this way, it should be two thirds of the length, because it always goes from the like if you think of the triangle as having a wall and a point, you know, on whichever side you're looking at. This is the wall. This is the point. It's a third of the way from the wall in both dimensions. 